Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. Welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. In this episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner, what I'd like to talk to you about is the Chassis Sim Simulation System. And why do I call it the Chassis Sim Simulation System? Well, one of the biggest but uh, one of the biggest myths out there with regards to simulation is it's incredibly complicated. It's something that's only accessible if you've got an IQ of about 400. And it's something that you need truckloads of time with. Well, the reason I'm calling this tutorial um, the Chassis Sim Simulation System is the fact that none of this could be further from the truth. Obviously, you need to um, treat it as a, uh, you obviously need to um, treat something like chassis sim as a tool, not as a magic wand. However, if you follow a set of steps, the results are going to take care of themselves. And the whole point of this tutorial is we're going to walk you through what these steps are. Hence, why we're calling it the chassis sim simulation system, because the millisecond you apply a system to something, all of a sudden the results come out in the wash. The key to the chassis sim simulation system is to start simple. You take an existing model and you modify it. The other thing you need to work through is the quick start guides, which can uh, uh, which can be found in the chassis sim help fol uh, in the chassis sim help folder whenever you uh, whenever you start chassis sim. Let's walk through quickly what these PDFs are. The first PDF is the chassis sim standard or the light quick start. Now, what that document does is it walks you through the chassis sim environment and it walks you through how to start the modeling process by taking an existing model and modifying it. The next step in the chassis sim system is to create a monster file and that is covered in the PDF document chassis sim monster file creation PDF. Once you've got the monster file you then use this to create to create a model using the process modeling in minutes and that's using one touch arrow and uh, the tire force estimation. Once you've done that, you are then walked through how to do chassis sim track crea uh, how to do chassis sim track creation which is included both as a document as a Microsoft Word document and as a PDF. The next um, item on the agenda is if you need it, if you've got a car with significant downforce, you work through the chassis sim error model creation .pdf where we're going to show you how to work through um, uh, the mo uh, how uh, we're going to um, uh, show you how to create an arrow model from uh, how we create an arrow model from scratch. Then to give you a rough overview of where to go in terms of uh, in terms of refining the model, we, we give you a quick guide and calls uh, in call of chassis sim model refinement .pdf. However, what we'd also rec uh, what we'd also recommend is if you want to do tire modeling as well, you go through the chassis sim tire model quick start .pdf, which shows you how to use the chassis sim um, uh, quick start um, tire model, which is a very quick introduction to the chassis sim version three tire model. And lastly, we top it off using the tire modeling to uh, uh, the tire modeling toolbox guide. So let's review. The system is. You start with an existing model. You work through the quick uh, through the um, quick start, which just shows you how to um, access the various components of chassis sim. We then work through the chassis sim monster file. We then do modeling, and uh, then we uh, you do the one touch and uh, the one touch error modeling and tire force modeling to come up with a model in minutes. Then we work you through the chassis sim track creation, where we show you how to create curvature, bump profiles, use the auto generation altitude road camber feature and how to use um, auto grip and some tips and tricks for refining your circuit models. Then we'll talk about chassis sim aero model creation. And once you've done that, we then work, on, work you on to how to do tire modeling. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the chassis sim system. You start from an existing model from uh, what's uh, currently available. You make small changes to it. You create the monster file. You run the one touch error modeling and the tire force estimation. You create the track, mo uh, you, you create the track model. You then, if you need to, you create an error model. Then you do the tire modeling. That in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, is the chassis sim system. So without further ado, let's apply it. As you can see, what I've done here is if I go to 
basically my example folder, you'll see here that I've got some actual formula free data and I've got the setup that pertains to it. Now, let's talk about what we need to do to apply the first step in the chassis sim system, which is choosing a model that most closely resembles outer, uh, that most uh, closely resembles the car that we'll be uh, modeling. So what we do is we go to the car menu, we click on the drop down box and you'll see here that we've got a number of different options that we can choose from. So for example, if you've got a V8 supercar or a NASCAR, you choose the V8 supercar template. If you've got something like a GP2 car, say a high downforce, high power car, you kick off on the GP2 template. We've even got a template for, um, for Formula SAE, but the key is that you um, go through and you select the template. So we select the RF3 template and, and we click on OK. Now you'll note here, if creating a new car model, remember to go File, Save As. So we'll do that very quickly and we go File, Save As. And all we'll do is just to um, keep this uh, to keep this in the tenor of our example here. And I'll go to F3 and I will call, call this dollar F310 example. So I've now got that saved. Now, the first part of the system, we now take a look at our so we now take a look at our setup sheet. And we now start making small ch and we now um, start um, uh, taking small changes. So for instance, we now go to our model. And you'll see we've already got a 900 pound spring entered, but let's just say we need to change um, the, rear, uh, the rear spring to say a 700 pound spring. So we entered that rate in newtons, uh, per, newtons per millimeter, which is approximately 122 and we click on okay. If we need to make geometry changes, we just simply click here to adjust points and we make small changes to the geometry. Now, another thing that I always do when I'm always going for, uh, when I'm uh, going through and changing geometry, I always click on analyze configuration just to make sure I haven't done anything silly. So, that's the first part of our uh, that's the first part of our system that's detailed in, in further detail in the chassis sim standard quick start PDF in the help menu. Now, the next part of the system is to create a chassis sim monster file. So, we open up our data logging package of choice. And you can see here that we've got the data that we need for our monster file in the order that's required. So, <laughs> not to waste too much time in terms of how to create a monster file, because you'll see another YouTube tutorial on the Chassis YouTube channel that outlines this. But I just simply go to, uh, I just simply go to export data, and I choose CSV file. Now, the critical thing here: choose 50 hertz. And uh, this is obviously how to do it in I2. So we include distance data and we go to export and we click on uh, and we just simply click on the chassis sim folder once again. And now the thing that I like to do when I'm creating monster files is that I save them in the same directory where I've got the car file. When you're initially setting up your vehicle model, I like to keep, uh, I like to keep all this in the um, uh, same uh, in the same directory because the chassis sim defaults tend to um, uh, the, sh uh, 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 the chassis sim uh, uh, defaults tend to put stuff in the same directory as the monster file and I find that to be a very useful convention. Um, so we click on that, we click on save, we're done, and then all we need to do, uh, then all we need to do is uh, we go into Excel. We'll click away on here, and we just simply click on open, and we click on, uh, and we navigate to the folder that we've got our CSV file in, and we uh, click on where we had the uh, monster file to begin with. And once we've located our folder, we click on all files. You'll hear our CSV file. We just simply click on monster export and we just simply get rid of the stuff we don't need. Because I'm getting rid of that because I didn't have loads. Now all I've got to do is go file, save as. 
and I'll just simply save that as a text tab delimiter. Do not save as Unicode. Save as text tab, tab delimited, and I'll go monster, and I'll just simply save this as monster import. Click on save. I've just generated my monster file. So now we have our monster file. We now take the third part of the chassis sim system, which is to run our initial model refinement. So we click on run the one touch error modeling, and this will estimate our our, uh, our error, uh, our initial guess at our error map. So we just need to import the monster file. Here's our monster file. We click on open. It'll tell us the file is processed. We click here to run the one touch error modeling. Click on OK. Now we're not going to do that just uh, just now. You'll see a uh, another tutorial where I've outlined how to do that in further in, in, in further detail. We move on to the tie force estimation. We click here to add our monster import file. We run uh, uh, we put that we run that in. You go away. You get a coffee. You come back. Click on OK to com uh, 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 click on OK to um, uh, commit the changes and import the monster files using um, the tire tabs, and you're good to go. The next part of the chassis sim system is now that we've got our settings of our car model put in and now that we've got our initial model refinement done, we simply create the curvature file and the, and the circuit model. So we click on here and we walk through the process. So here we talk, uh, here we talk um, circuit create um, uh, curv uh, curvature file. So we import our monster file. We indicate that we're using the monster import file. We do the same thing with um, create bumper with the create bump prof, bump profile, the altitude road camber from data if needed, and the run auto grip matching. Now, I actually give you a hands-on example of this in one of the other YouTube uh, chassis sim uh, video tutorials called um, creating lap time circuit models in minutes that you can find on the chassis sim uh, YouTube channel. But that's the that's the second uh, that is the next part of the chassis sim system. Once we've got um, that done, we then create our arrow model. How do we do that? Well, if you've got access to it, that's where the arrow modeling toolbox comes in. Once again, we add in our monster import file, and if you've run a series of tests, you keep running that, and you use tools such as the optimize arrow map feature, or generate arrow map from arrow toolbox results to generate the arrow uh, to generate the arrow surface map. And in that PDF, chassis CM arrow modeling the uh, arrow model creation PDF, um, we outline in detail step by step everything you need to do. Once you've done that. And you've got a good error model, and you've got good error model, uh, good error model correlation. The next bit of the process is to start refining the tire, is to start refining and creating the tire model. Your first port of call is the tire model quick start, which we outline how to do in the PDF, the tire model quick start guide.pdf. And so here you've got the major aspects of the chassis sim version free tire model that you can adjust. And you can adjust this very quickly by clicking on the relevant components that you want to edit. And if you're happy with that, you click on OK. And this is a really powerful tool to really dial in a really good uh, to dial in a really good tire model. And we show you some tips and tricks in that quick start.pdf. The last step in the process is this big boy, the tire force modeling toolbox. This is one of the most powerful toolboxes that Chassis Sim has because what it does is, is that it allows you to reverse engineer your tire model from actual data. A, colleague, a good friend and colleague of mine actually said to this, it's the best tire dyno he's ever had access to on the simple principle that what it does is it gives you uh, it gives you a very, very accurate picture of what your tires were up to from race data. And we discussed that more in depth and the process in which you need to do that in the chassis sim um, uh, tire modeling um, guide.pdf. You'll also see a series of free videos creating tire, uh, 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 creating tire models in um, chassis sim, which is actually a free part series. So I'd recommend you onto that. But to review, That, ladies and gentlemen, is the chassis sim system. Start off with a start off with a model that, clo that that closely resembles your race car. You then make small changes to it. You create the monster file. You run the one touch, 
and uh, you run the one touch and tire force estimation as is described in modeling in minutes. You use the track creation to um, uh, create uh, the tracks. If you have, uh, if you need to model aero, you go through the chassis sim aero model creation to create an aero model, and then you do tires. If you work it that way, the results will take care of them. Results will take care of themselves, and you are going to find for yourself the resonant power that is in chassis sim because chassis sim isn't just another package that simulates lap times. This is a tool that allows you to truly get your head around what the race car is doing. And that is what makes Chassis Sim and this system such a powerful and useful tool that's going to help you in your quest of making your race car go fast.